I appreciate this House is some distance away from doing for the low paid what we have already done for superannuitants, establishing an agreed floor. But I'll leave folk with the idea anyway. The time has come to say thank you to Alicia, Michael, Ellie, David, Karen, Penny, Eric, to Margaret, to Les, to Fiona, to Don and to Natalie. What a wonderful mix of talent and commitment. And looking back at me is the Honourable Stan Roger, who has been my mentor then and now. Thanks, Stan. And over there, there's Mike Williams and Mike Smith, who have been my friends forever. They're not even written into the speech, but they're great thinkers and great comrades. When we left government in 2008, Keith Mason, who was my SPS for most of that, those years, drew up a list of over 80 people who had worked in my office, and many of those people are here. I can't name them, but I thank them. And if I think of the very many chief executives and senior officials with whom I've worked, the numbers just get bigger, much bigger. So I shall say that amongst them are some of the finest New Zealanders I have met. For all that the public service has driven me to distraction and despair, the public service has also filled me with uncomplicated respect, thanks to those who work in this complex or who arrive at midnight to clean it, people who do their job well and then somehow manage to do a little bit more. You are a great bunch. Thanks to my colleagues from across the political divide for your comradeship and your engagement and wit in the non-adversarial parts of this job, be that around the select committee table or around the world. Over recent months, many people in Dunedin have stopped to thank me for my efforts on their behalf over the years. All of them have it the wrong way round. Representing Dunedin North has been a privilege, pure and simple. It is an astonishing electorate in more ways than can be described. The Dunedin North Labour Party is one of the best organisations in the land. It has hundreds of clever, argumentative, wonderful people. It has depth, it has breadth, it has fun. It is also a magnet for talent. I hope you will see what I mean should David Clark take his seat in this chamber in a few weeks. Here's a story to finish with. Long ago, I was attacking a piece of rough ground next door with a big self-propelling rotary hoe. Instead of selecting reverse gear, I dropped it into top. It went over the bank and down about three or four metres to the stream bed below, and I went with it. I don't know how, Mr Speaker, but I got to the stream bed first. I know this to be the case because I remember very clearly the rotary hoe arriving shortly afterwards. <laughs> Remarkably, I was not badly hurt. I reached up, I turned the machine off, and I collected my wits. On the opposite bank, a fine old bloke called Jimmy Hanna, he's no longer with us, appeared above me. He had a heart of gold and a face like a raisin, and away, away with words, he was a, he was a, a, a wharfie, retired wharfie. Are you OK, Pete? Yeah, I think so. Good oak. I was just saying to her indoors, by geez, I hope that's not a by-election. <laughs> so, Mr Speaker, uh, that event did not end my political career, but this event does. It's been a hell of a ride. Thanks, everybody, for having me, and I'll see you around. Ka kite anō. Yeah.